Okay, so in this video, we are going to look at two different types of pumps that are used in automatic transmissions. The first style that we're going to look at is this one right here, which is a fixed displacement pump. And then after we're done with that, we're going to look at this one over here, which is a variable displacement pump. Now, before we get started, I want to just clarify one thing. Sometimes when you're talking about automatic transmissions, people will refer to the impeller inside the torque converter as the pump. I don't want you to get that confused with this pump. These pumps are the pumps that pump all the fluid through the entire transmission, all the circuits of the transmission. The pump in the torque converter is just for the torque converter operation. Okay, so make sure you know the difference when people are talking about those two things. All right, so let's flip this fixed displacement pump over, and this might look familiar to some of you. This is what you would see inside the bell housing of your transmission. This is the thing right at the front, right behind the torque converter that would be sitting right here. This is my transmission's front seal. There would be an input shaft coming out of the center of this. And then my torque converter would sit over the input shaft, come in through here. It would have two notches cut out of it that would line up with these two lugs. And those notches would be turning this rotor. Okay, so just make sure you understand that if the engine is running, the torque converter will be spinning and therefore the pump will be spinning. So if the engine's on, transmission is pumping fluid. Now let's talk about what makes this thing a fixed displacement pump. Okay, you can see this crescent piece that is right here. This crescent piece is part of this housing. So therefore it does not move, it does not change. So that means that the gaps around this rotor are always going to be the same size. So when fluid is drawn in from this side, it will be taken through this same high volume area, it'll be squeezed through this same small volume area, and it will always displace the same volume of fluid. That's what makes it fixed. So per rotation of this rotor, it will always displace the same volume of fluid. Now if this thing spins faster, it will displace that volume more times per second, but per rotation, it doesn't change anything. Okay, and that does affect your fuel economy, by the way. Right? If you're in a situation where you don't need all that fluid flow, this thing can't change anything about it. And so your engine is going to keep working the same amount to turn this pump, even though you don't need all that fluid flow, all that pressure. And so that is why they've gone to these variable displacement pumps, so that we can get better fuel economy in those situations. Okay? Before we move on to this variable displacement pump, I just wanted to take a couple pieces out of here so you can see what's behind them. All right, you can see that crescent that we talked about that is part of the housing. You can also see these ports that are cut in. This is the inlet. This is where the fluid is gonna be sucked in from the transmission's pan. It's going to be brought around, squeezed, pressurized, and this can be forced out this port, which is our discharge port. And then the fluid is gonna be fed into our valve body and the circuits of the transmission. Okay, so that is how a fixed displacement pump works. Now let's take a look at this variable displacement pump. Okay, so right away you can see that the variable displacement pump is very different looking than the other pump that we were looking at. This is called a variable vein pump. These little inserts that you see right here, these are the veins. And because of those, you can see that I can actually manipulate the spacing around the rotor. Okay, the rotor is still going to rotate just like this. But because of these little veins, I can control how much fluid is drawn in, how tightly it is squeezed, and therefore the volume and the pressure that is output from the pump. Okay, it still has the same discharge inlet ports on the back of the housing, but now we have the ability to manipulate this spacing right here. Now, this is going to just continually rotate in one perfect circle. So it's not this piece that we're going to be moving like I am right here. It's actually this piece around the outside that we're gonna to manipulate to change the output. So you can see that this ring has a central pivot point right here, a fixed pivot point, I should say. And on the other side, it's got a spring that is constantly pushing the ring against this side of the housing. Okay, so if I wanted to change the output of this pump, what I would need to do is put something in here in this gap that will push against this spring tension and make the whole ring kind of move this way off of this pivot point. 
And the thing that we're going to put in here on this side is pressurized transmission fluid. So the same fluid that the pump is creating pressure with is going to be fed into this side and move that outer ring to change the output of the pump. And the thing that's in control of it is the computer. So the computer knows the pressure, it knows the demands of the engine and the car, and so if it sees a need to change the output, it will turn on a solenoid called an electronic pressure control solenoid, or an EPC solenoid, which will route pressurized fluid into here, move the ring over, change this spacing around the rotor, and therefore change the output of the fluid. Okay, so that's what makes this thing variable. And remember, it's variable to save us on fuel economy and improve our efficiency overall.